will probably never go pro in Rocket League. Only 0.03% of ranked players on average ever reach the highest rank, and an even smaller pool of them reach their dreams of the RLCS. And these five signs may be killing your chances at ever going pro. You are practicing all wrong. Just about every single pro will tell you the same thing. The first thing you, you kind of have to do is grind the game. I know this is like the most boring answer in the world. That's because it is. The claim that you just need to sink hours into the game to improve isn't wrong by any means. But from a pro's perspective, they have improved by fixing their mistakes along the way and learning while they grind the game. In spite of that, you could sink a ton of hours into playing and not have the same ability to pick up on your mistakes and can actually develop bad habits that counteract the hours you're putting in as you repeat them. So it is important to put time into just playing, but in terms of hours, you need to be putting quality over quantity. Quality hours include things like reviewing your replays and watching pros play, watching tutorials, practicing your weaknesses, and playing with people better than you if you can. While a beginner will make a rotational mistake and repeat them as it builds in their muscle memory, a pro will watch the replays and notice a mistake and fix it so they don't do it again next time. A beginner would load up ranked and keep trying to hit that cool flashy mechanic they saw, while the pro would have noticed they had bad shot placement and practice in free play or shooting packs to improve their weak area. It's easy to look at an RLCS team like Oxygen, described as having natural talent and grinding the game much less than other pros, but at one point in time they have all sufficiently sunk quality hours into the game and continue to improve now with the high highest level of RLCS scrims for practice. Just don't forget to have fun with it and enjoy the process of improving or you won't go pro. Quality hours are important, but make sure you stick around because all of these signs go hand in hand and number five is a crucial one. You make too many mistakes. Now that you have a strategy to practice, it's time to start making less mistakes because pro players are incredibly consistent. In the RLCS, you barely have room for error and will be punished for every mistake you make. This is nothing like ranked in that sense, but you are gonna make mistakes because face it, everybody does. Oh, and he scores that on his own net? You just need to make sure the mistakes you're making are small and that you're making as little as possible. In this highly competitive scene, there's always gonna be someone out there gunning for your pro spot that may not have made the same mistake. And at the end of the day, they cause goals, which cause games and will reflect on you. If you're wondering how you can train your consistency, it really comes down to knowing when to play less risky and using mechanics that you're comfortable with. Even if you are confident in your mechanics though, putting yourself in a tough situation will only make it harder for you and odds are you will struggle to stay consistent if you're just in inherently difficult positions all the time. Consistency also isn't just about making mistakes, but rather things like placing your shots correctly more than not, getting the right touches to teammates, and being consistently useful in the play. This is something players will notice and even if you made it pro, you'd want to be a consistent one rather than just breaking through once or twice. But realistically, you just won't get there if you show too many inconsistencies on your way to the top. You have poor decision making. Look, you may have great mechanics, but so do tons of high level ranked players and even freestylers. But what a lot of these others don't have is sufficient game sense. Just having consistent mechanics isn't enough to go pro. Even if you can, I don't know, triple flip reset every single time without fail. Pros have mechanics, but they're also very smart with the way they play and know exactly when to apply them. We know exactly how to play as a team. Ranked is so much different than tournaments and stuff. Yeah. And we just have like so much experience that we just know what works. I mean, look at the old Torment on Cloud9 or even the four-time Turbo Pulsa. Both players were well known for being a bit less mechanical compared to the peers, yet they both ultimately became world champions. This this is heavily because they have a strong game IQ, solid fundamentals, and just so much experience that they're prepared for any situation that comes at them. Do you think rotation is the most important aspect of Rocket League? Yes, but more so also being smart in decision making. Just don't go for stupid balls and that kind of stuff, you know? You can't have bad decision making in GoPro, and it is hard to learn game sense, so you may be wondering how you can improve this. Well, the boring answer is just grind the game and get used to situations you'll be put in and find out what works best for you. You can accelerate this though by watching pro replays and applying the things they do to your game. A lot of it will honestly need to come to you a bit naturally, and as I mentioned before, it can be very hard to break bad habits, but the more you get used to situations, the more you'll be ready for it when it happens again next time. And to get used to playing in a tournament setting, maybe even try six mans or find a team to play with, because you may need a very different play style compared to how you play in ranked. No one knows who you are. Let's say that none of these signs apply to you, or that you did train and become amazing at the game. But now what? You won't just magically be a part of a pro team, and you're still going to need to get your name out there. So in order to find a team, you will need to network with other players. So Daniel is like one of the hardest grinders in the pro scene. He was a 13, 14 year old kid, but the reason so many people knew him is because he was always like beating the pros just in ranked, and he was making friends like along the way. Like he had 
so many connections at the top. Like when he turned 15 to be eligible, he had all of these top teams like approaching him. You of course need to put the work in to get to that level, but as Rettles put it, knowing people can make all the difference. And if you can manage to improve while making connections on the way, you'll be one step closer to going pro. Your best bet to make these connections is to just party up with other players or find a team to play with in tournaments to get that experience. While playing ranked at the highest level, I'd meet other players that are also really good and then try to just play some ESLs with them. ESLs were just weekly tournaments at the time. Through those ESLs, you can make other connections if you beat other good players and they'll recognize that you're good. You're gonna need an outlet to show your results, whether that's ranked 1v1 or 2v2. Even though RLCS is played in 3v3, it's looked at much less than being highly rated in these game modes since it's just a better way of showing your individual ability, which is really what matters most at first. If you do wanna play threes, you're better off playing six bands, so you do have options depending on what you prefer. But like we've seen multiple times in the past, a proven way of starting a pro career is to grind the ranked leaderboards in ones or twos and earn yourself an invite to a show match. Doing all of these things together is good, especially since even if you are unable to become a pro player, making these connections can open huge opportunities for you in terms of coaching, substituting, or even managing in the future. Just know if you've been toxic and ranked and developed a bad reputation, this works both ways and will only hurt your opportunities in the long run. You don't actually want it that bad. A lot of people say they want to be a pro player, but going pro is one of the hardest things to do. With no set pathways and few spots available, there are more people able to become doctors than pro Rocket League players. Like, I played it so much, it's actually like unhealthy how much I played it. I had gotten addicted to this, was putting in 8, 10 hours a day. I was getting home from school at 4 p.m., playing till 4 a.m. I was going to high school at the time. I was like not sleeping much at all it was a mess i mean my grade sucked i wasn't making the money i am now and my parents were like what is he doing you need to spend a lot of your time to compete at this level and have to accept you're gonna need to give certain things up and there aren't many that are willing to make the tough sacrifices going pro requires while it can be a great investment of your time and rewarding the further you make it the scene is super cutthroat and your situation could flip upside down at any time Esports in general, like you could play bad for three months and lose your job. You need to be on top of your game at all times. You're chasing a dream and sometimes, you know, sacrifices do need to be made. This means you'll need to have a strong mentality in and out of the game. It's important to focus on yourself getting better rather than blaming teammates. So for a lot of players, you will need a mentality change. But if you do go pro with a strong mental game, chances are you will have an edge on a handful of the current pros. Overall, going pro can be very rewarding with the opportunity to travel the world playing a game all while making a great salary. But a lot of pros make the mistake of not building their brands and doing things outside of competing like making content even if someone else does it for them. Because being at the top is temporary. If you still think this is for you, then contrary to the title, you can put in the work and become a pro if that's your dream. Clearly people have done it, but they haven't taken any shortcuts because there really are none. The more you take these things into consideration, the more likely you will have a strong career in the game. And the pros show all of these signs, not just one. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.